Hey everybody, it's Marianne at Marianne's Michigan Kitchen, and it's been a while since we've done pie crust. And it's been a while since I have, I don't think I've ever shown my secret on how to make a, my famous chicken pot pie that I used to make when I owned the bakery. So today we're going to start off with the ingredients for the pie crust. And this is my official pie crust that I used to do at the bakery. I'd do like 24 or 30 pie crust. And you got a big mixer, you can do a lot of pie crust. So, anyhow, the key, and I, I want to make sure y'all can see this. Because the key to a good dice on your butter is to cut it in half. Okay? Then you keep, these are the two cut pieces, put them back together, cut those in half, all right, then you cut that into little chunks. Oops. So this way you have all your butter cut up into bits. That's like a little half inch bit, sort of, kind of. Doesn't really make any difference. It's not the the biggest thing. But this is an all butter crust. I like the butter crust over anything else. So this recipe, I'm gonna be cutting it here, but I have to get me a bigger knife. This recipe is really foolproof. you want to get this cut up and then you want to get it back in the refrigerator or the freezer even now there are some people out there will tell you on your butter that you can shred it or save you know um put it on a thing and shave it and that's okay i guess if that's what you're into but i've just done it this way I have not taken, I think it's, they freeze the butter, they freeze this individual stick of butter, and then they shave it down on, um, I don't know what you call that thing. What do you call that thing, Mike? What do you call it what? When I give you the cheese to shred, like, it, what's that thing called that you shred it on? Um. See, this is already soft. Now, you got to be careful here, because your knife is sharp. Anyhow, it doesn't make any difference right now. What makes a difference is that this butter is soft already. We'll have that machine or that tool out for shredding the cheese. I guess, I don't, not shredder is not the right word. I don't know. But anyways, you can see this butter has been out and it's already starting to get soft. And I just brought it out of the refrigerator. So now I think I'm going to have problems with this one. So I'm going to get my littler knife and cut these in half. Sometimes it's just a knife. That might not be a good knife anymore. You know, what's ironic is this is a Cutco brand knife, and that's a Pampered Chef brand knife. And I've never had to sharpen the Cutco. And I've had these for, gosh, 35 years. Anyhow, this all has to go in the refrigerator and get recold, or I'm going to stick it in the freezer for right now. I'll be back. Okay, so while the butter is in the freezer getting firmed back up, 
I'm going to show you all the other ingredients. We have four cups of all-purpose flour, and we have one egg. So I'm going to put the flour in my KitchenAid. And then into that, I'm going to add in one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of baking powder. Now that all is going to be mixed up into my guide right here. Now that's it for the dry ingredients. And then I have left here a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and one egg. And I have to get a half a cup of cold water. And the water's got to be really cold. Okay. So what I like to do, but it's a little chilly in here, but... What I'll do is I'll fill this with a couple ice cubes, and then this is my quarter cup, and I'll pour the water in here twice to put it in there. So that's what I like to do there. And um, that's really all there is to it. Cold water. It's cold in here. I got all my dry ingredients in here. I'm all ready to go. The egg and the vinegar do not go in they go in after the butter. So all the flour here, and I put all the butter stuff in, and then we'll go from there. This is part one of my chicken. Now, I did never do this before, with cutting up the, the onion with my chicken, but I gotta cook the chicken. And I believe I've done it before with cooking it in bacon grease and having bacon. But, um, I didn't want to thaw out any bacon today. Just bought me some chicken. And I want to dice it. So... Dice away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was at the store the other day and um, I decided I didn't really need onions. Because I thought, well, it's been a couple weeks and I've used up a lot of my onions. So, anyways, there's the onion. We're going to get that going in the pan and I'll cut the chicken. Alright, I have my onion. Turn that down a little bit. have my chicken. It's funny how a grocery store tells you anymore that that's a chicken breast. Well, you know. This is like half a chicken breast. chopping the chicken up before I cook it and the reasoning is is because you'll have a kind all kinds of flavor on all your pieces of chicken versus just having it on the outside of the chicken Chicken's cold. 
And the reason you want to get the chicken cooking ahead of time is because the chicken pot pie kind of takes a bit of time. Not really a long bit of time. It just takes multiple steps. So this is a great day. It's cloudy outside. We don't have anything scheduled to do outside. Now tomorrow's supposed to be warmer and sunnier. Which we'll be outside doing something. Putting the yard to bed for the winter. So I'm making five pie crusts all together. Only one of them is going to be in this chicken business. And the other ones are going for apple pie. So we'll show you that. I'm not using my uh new pans because I want a lid. So I got the onion sauteed in there, the olive oil. Now I'm going to put the chicken in there. Leave that out. <coughs> you got a nice long thin shirt on. Mm -hmm. Feel a lot warmer? You betcha. In our neck of the woods here in Michigan, it got down to where we had... I mean, it's 42 degrees and it's 11 o'clock in the morning. We have freeze warnings out for the area and frost warnings. Alright. I do want to put some of my seasoning salt on here. I'm going to turn this, that down. And I am going to cover it. So that's going to be our chicken. So that's the beginning of our chicken pot pie. Turn this around. Um, so we're going to make pie crust. And here's the thing that you have to think about for the pie crust. If you're just making pie crust to put them in your freezer, it's no big deal. If you're making pie crust to actually use today, like I am... And I'm going to have a warm chicken product going into the pie crust. I want my pie crust really cold. But I want that kind of warm, lukewarm, not hot. So this is where freezer vegetables come into play. Um, at Costco I got yesterday, I got uh, the mixed vegetables. So it has carrots, peas, corn, green beans. And that's what we're going to use, which will help cool down the sauce after we make the sauce. So when it's done, then we can pour it right into the pan. So now we have to decide what pan we're going to use to make our pot pie. So our decision for the chicken pot pie is we're going to put it in this container. Yeah. It's kind of an oblong container. And then for our apple pie we're going to make like a slab apple pie so it's going to go in here it won't be as fat as this but yeah so we've decided figured out what our pie is going to go to so now I'm thinking about making the pie but he's getting ready to go outside and i want him to bring me back in some other apples got the kitchen aid here got my frozen butter out take my ice water over here after i spill it You gotta clean up your messes after you spill stuff. You don't want to be slipping and sliding. All right, so here's my frozen butter, and I can break each one of these apart. I just gotta put them in there. The machine will break apart. And you know how people tell you to look for something that looks like peas? I, I never understood that. Now I've been in the kitchen for 61 years. I'm 66, and I started when I was five. And where I put sand in? 
reason is, I assume, is they were trying to explain to you what to look for when they knew that the butter was all incorporated into the flour. Uh-huh. All I can say is, the first time you do it, you're probably not going to get it right. No big deal, you just have big chunks of butter. The second time, you'll be a little closer. The third time, you might be able to get it a little closer yet. I'm going to move you around so I can flip this guy around so we can get in there and sort of see what he's doing. As you can see, there's big chunks, little chunks, whatever, and a lot of flour. I don't really want a lot of flour. I, want, I don't really want big chunks. Let the machine do its work. We're going to do a stand mixer, then a food processor on this. But you can do this in a food processor. However, I think it goes too fast, even on a halter or low spin. See, right down there in the middle, you can see where the heavier butter's at. I don't know if you'll see it or not. But now, this is starting to feel. See, I still got big chunks of butter in there. Big chunks. But it's starting to feel like I have butter in the flour, like the flour and the butter are incorporating. I've never made one that looks like peas. I've made it to where when you pick up a little bit of flour, it feels like butter is in there. You see, but there's little pieces of butter. There's still big pieces of butter, don't get me wrong. I've got my chicken and onions cooking over there. All right, I think I am just about ready here. So, what happens now is in goes the egg and the vinegar. We get that all incorporated. All right, looking good. Now, here comes the fun part. So, I have my cup of water with ice, and I have my little guy here in his quarter cup. It's supposed to be half a cup altogether. All right. Now, this is what takes time and thought. If you've watched my other videos, when it comes, you have to understand the season that you're in. Um, right now, it's cold, and the humidity is. 81% outside, but it's less inside because we're running the furnace. You have to understand when your flour was processed. And you want it to come together. I don't, I don't put it on my, my whole half a cup. You want to be able to feel it. If it feels like it's got dry parts in it, you need just a splash more water. This feels pretty good. And then when you squeeze it together, look at that. Nice clump. And look, I have a uh, quarter ounce of water left over. But anyways, this crust is done and it's ready to be processed. So, it didn't take very long once you start putting the moisture in. But I knew that I probably wouldn't use all that water. Now, when I first started making pie crust, oh my gosh, I was ready to pull my hair out. Because I follow the recipe exactly. But nobody ever said, you may need more water. Your mix just might need more water. Do not be afraid to add a little bit more water if your mix feels dry. And when I mean dry, I mean dry down here at the base. Not up at the top, but at the base. But if you can get your big, huge conglomeration done up like that, that's not dry. And it took me a while to realize I can handle a wet dough better than I can handle a dry dough. Because guess what? I roll it out on flour. So anyways, that's that step. And the next step will be um, rolling out the dough. Just got to move this a little ways that way. Okay. Alright. So I rolled my dough on, or put my dough onto my dough board. And I covered it up with this until I was ready. And the first thing we're going to make the crust for is our chicken pot pie. Ooh, I might need, I'm going to have to have that bowl back over. This one right here. Yeah. <laughs> Sit him right over on top of that. Flip oh, him over. Right here. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. There yeah, we yeah. go. And this is my bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to have flour. All right. Do not be afraid of the flour. It's still, it's not right. Move those cups right there, please. Oh. Mm -hmm. these cups. Yeah. Okay. Move them out of the way. Move them completely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Salt. There we go. That's good. All right. Now, this is good. Normally, you would want to roll this out, but I kind of have an oblong oval, not a round. So I'm going to roll it like this. All right. Okay. 
him all done up. When you roll up pie crust, when you roll out pie crust, flour is going to be everywhere. So here's my bowl, my container. I rolled this up on my rolling pin. I'm going to stick him down in here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh. When they talk about the corners of a dish, uh, because you don't have a, a corner like a 90 or a 45 and when you do an oval, but it's where the bottom meets the side. You want to make sure your dough is down in there. Okay. And this was a fold, so we'll just squish him together. Mike, would you be so kind as to get me a butter knife, please? Butter knife. Yeah. Now, we found that making a chicken pot pie, we prefer not to have a second crust on it. So, I'm just going to cut this off. There we go. Perfect. Now that is a beautiful vessel to put the chicken pot pie in. All right. And he is going to go in the refrigerator. Could you um, open the door, please? Fridge. Fridge. done yeah. well the one that will come next there we go there we go All right. now whoops get this turned around correctly got that Two tablespoons. Oh, you need to shred the cheese. Shred it. Yep, I got yeah. it all out right there. Let's see that. Uh, that high in the oven. Yeah. Turn this down. Yeah. You want to add the big one, huh? Big hole. Oh, uh, no, uh, the other one, yeah. On your right, or your left, yeah. Right there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the gravy type thing that I make sauce for the, what am I making? Oh, chicken pot pie. I had to stop there and think, what am I making? <laughs> I'm just uh -huh. making uh -huh. so much today. Yeah, uh-huh. You want the whole chunk to be done up? Yep. Okay. Wait till I stop and show them all what the kitchen looks like. So anyways, this is, I was cooking the chicken in the pan. And then I've had the chicken sitting off to the side. It's looking very good. I actually wrote this recipe down. Wow. It was so good. Great. So it's two tablespoons of butter. Two tablespoons of flour. You want to get your flour in here and you want to get it cooking. Rent this whole chunk is gone. Yep, the whole okay. chunk. It says I need two cups. Oh, 
All right, that cooked up really nice. Usually I have this a little bit thicker. Yeah, that's true. I just got to double check myself. Oh, I put in four tablespoons of butter. Oh, well. Is that too much or not enough? <laughs> Overdone, huh? Need a little bit more flour. But I mean, I'm putting cheese in this. Yeah. So I put in four cup, four tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of flour. Yeah. It's got lots of brown bits in here, which is good. And. favorite for flavoring better than bouillon so I will take a tablespoon of it put that in there stir it around flour is cooking this is looking really good Turn the flame down. I get my chicken bouillon warmed up a bit. There, that was very nice. Now we're gonna get the milk in here. It's just about time that I went to a whisk. So I got to interrupt your shredding here. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Pour the rest of the milk in here. Let it get a little warm. Get my cup of water. Turn this flame down just a little bit more over here. Turn this flame up. It's all about knowing your stove and the flameage. I really don't know how people cook on an electric stove. I think when we first moved into this house, it was electric stove. Drove me nuts. I probably burned a lot of stuff. Then the gas man came and hooked us up for gas. I never looked back. Mm -hmm. See all those lumps in here? I don't know if you can see the lumps, but there's this is lumpy. Now, it could be that because I still had onion in here, could be the lump. Let that cook a little bit. Did you see that? Chocolate fried pie. Man, this looks like a war zone around here. Just whip this when it's thick like this. This is my key secret for a good lump, less, no lump um, gravy. It's when it's thick like this. You have to whip it. Whip it good. Whip it into shape. Only if you grew up listening to 80s music do you understand that. So it was two tablespoons, well I put in three tablespoons, no four tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, one tablespoon of chicken, bouillon, 
one cup of milk. Now, I want this to be thinner because Mike's doing cheese. Yeah, it's not just any chicken pot pie. It's a cheesy chicken pot pie. So we want this to be liquidy because the cheese will help. And that's all they get because I'm going to Oh, this. well, you know, you're the worker. You got to take your you gotta, payment. You got to get that taste on it, you know. Yep. Oh, this is nice. This mm. is nice and creamy. Oh, man. Yum, yum. <laughs> mm. I don't know if people can see that. Oh, get a spoon. Oh, yeah. And that does not even have the cheese in it yet. Yum, yum. Oh, my mm. God, my tummy got a little bit on my tongue. And... Oh. Bring that plate and the grater over here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I need that for the top. Okay, all right. Okay. There you go. Now, I didn't get all the cheese that Mike had grated, and it was probably about, I'm going to say, a cup and a half, two cups. This is cheddar cheese, a white Vermont cheddar cheese. However, you need cheese for the top, so you got to hold some cheese back. Mm -hmm. You want this nice, silky? Mm-hmm. So it's on low. Oh, look at that. That's creamy. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Hey, I'm going to try it with a piece of chicken. Mmm. Perfection. Stove's off. see this pot pie over this chocolate fried pie oh. oh my gosh look at that oh, oh, oh. that nice mm. okay now no. I'm gonna pause it for a station identification break Okay, I went out and I got a, a bowl that big with veggies. I don't know, it's a couple cups, two or three, whatever you want. You know. So this is the frozen vegetable mix. And this is what's going to cool this down. Gosh, I used to make this up in such big batches. Oh, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. It cooled down. So... down I make sure you get in all the 
corners as they say. It's cold. Mm -hmm. Now I have this little bit of cheese left. Yeah. Sprinkle it all on top. Now, could you make this without the crust? Yeah. I'd call it stew. And there we go. In the oven it goes. I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. Let's see, timer. Let's go 45. Let's go 50. And that's it. Oh, thanks for hanging out with us today. We've made pie crust. We've made chicken pot pie to put in the pie crust. We have made a um, chocolate fried pie. I should really start from here. Here is... That's, that's dirty. That's dirty. That's dirty, 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 dirty. That bowl is dirty, 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 cooking, dirty. Here's the table. All of that. And then over there in front of the coffee pot, over here, and in the sink. It's all dirty. Why? Because we went on a rampage today. That's beautiful. And this is what's in the oven cooking. Apple pie on the left, chicken pot pie on the right. It's a pie kind of day. <sighs> we'll be back when something else happens. Thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe and share this recipe. And get together and make pie crust. It's the most fun. Well, we put in a hard day's work today. Our chicken pot pie is done. As you can see, it's all bubbly and busting out the seams. Our apple pie was done a little bit ago. And then this here is our chocolate fried pie, which will be our dessert today. And also, the kitchen is clean. Time to eat. Well, I thought we'd eat on a plate, but I had to put it in a bowl. One thing I believe I would have done different is uh, made my crust a little thicker, I think. But it's done. Now I get to take a bite. It's quite hot. You're, yeah, you're pretty. Oh my gosh. 